Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the Shred Show Live. You can see their smiling faces hanging out with me. I've got Val Miller and the absolutely, the phenomenal, the incredible Shashank Jakar joining me this morning. And we're going to get into some topics. And ladies and gentlemen, we're sharing some of the secrets. What's to come in our industry and the tools that the absolute pros are using right now to dominate the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to want to miss this. Volume up. It's time to Shred. Red. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited for our two guests this morning. The always talented and incredible Val Miller joining us from Art of Home Ownership. You can see her bright, smiling face. She just makes us all smile. And then when you see him, you're just like, oh my gosh, is that really? Is that Shashank Shakar? That really is. That's a, that's number six himself in the entire gun. Like, holy crap, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? I am so excited to be have, have both of these guests join us today. And they really need no introduction. But again, Shashank Shakar of Arcus Lending, literally on the Scotsman's guy, number six in the entire country, ladies and gentlemen. Plus, he's one of those guys that continually hits this list. It's not just like, oh, he did it once. He is always on this top. He's always top 1% of all originators in the entire country. Shashank, thanks for joining us this morning, brother. I appreciate you joining. Thank you, Josh. And, and you're correct. I mean, Val's smile is so contagious. Like, <laughs> To look at her and you smile. So, I'm flattered. Thank you. I, I can't say the same about you, Josh. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, hey, I get it. It's cool. I got the long hair going. I'm trying to catch up to Val, though. I'm like, hey, maybe if I can get that hair going, maybe I'll try harder, Josh. Try harder. I got to try harder. Try harder. We'll see. I, and I actually got to give a shout out to Val. Do you see that microphone, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to give a little, her a little crap. I'm she upgrading. has upgraded her her entire look at her. I'm so proud. But let's Thank let's you. dive into it. There's a lot to talk about today. But honestly, Shishan, you again. And I don't keep saying this out of like trying to bolster you up or like I, I'm going to humble brag for you because you and I have been friends for a long time. You've all, I've always watched what you're doing at from an originator standpoint, running a company standpoint, and you always are. You're consistent. You're always among the top one percent of all originators. And people, they just when they when you speak, they listen. They want to hear what you're doing. So. I, with that being the case, you know, you, you are extremely efficient. You have the tools, you have the processes put in place to really help you continue to be efficient, to help that, you know, the journey of home ownership continue mm -hmm. to be a focus for you in Arcus Lending. So share a little bit about some of the process, some of the things that you do, especially as the, it, we have an ever evolving market. What are some of the things that you're doing? What are the tools you have in place to really help Arcus continue to grow? So Josh, I think one thing that you mentioned is, is is the discipline, right? You can get in and out of the Scotsman Guide or whatever that list is, but that shows that you're not consistent with your discipline and whatever it is. I mean, different people succeed at different things. I mean, yeah. there are things that I do that makes me successful. Uh, and you might be not be doing any of that stuff and you could still be successful. But if you are in that list, seven, eight, what, eight here in a row uh, in the top 200 in the country, that means you're doing something which is very consistent and works for you. So that I think is is the big problems that I see with people who get in and out of the list is that they get a year like 2020, they pat themselves on the back and they said, we did it or <laughs> I did it. Yeah. Right. You get, I got in this business in 2008, Josh, you said, I mean, you and I have been friends for a long time. So you know my story, but some of the yeah. people may not. But in the year like 2008, when I was 18 months in the country, had $1,900 of savings. And, and, and that's when I got in the business. And everyone who I was talking to was, I mean, you were not getting inspired or motivated by them because everyone was like, economy is so shitty, there's nothing we can do about it, right? So everything was about the economy and what, what was happening in 2008 and nine with the mortgage meltdown and real estate crisis and everything. Then you get out of year like 2020 and everybody thinks it was them for some reason, right? We have this mindset that if something goes wrong, it's something outside, something that I don't control. But if something goes right, it must be us. And so we need to get out of that. I mean, you don't get to a year like 2020 and just, I mean, get on get on your high horse and think that you somehow made this incredible year happen. I mean, I had an incredible year, but most of us did. So so that's that's a lot also because I mean, if you had 60, 70, 80 percent refinance, I mean, you should you shouldn't take all the credit. I mean, I I I, I get some point of it. So discipline is is really important. In, um, really having the tools to go with it, right? I, I, I have this pyramid that I talk about, the 
the mindset, the strategy, the, the plans, and then the tactics. You need to start at the mindset level, which is the discipline, right? When you get into a mortgage business, if you get into this business saying, oh, that's an easy money. I just saw my friend making 100K or whatever, and they make like 5,000 every time they close a loan. Oh, I can do this all day long. And that's the wrong mindset that you get into. It's, it's a very, very, very difficult business, irrespective of which market you are in. So that's your mindset. The strategy becomes after that, it's like, okay, if I have the mindset and I know that this is going to be hard and I'm going to work on it, my discipline, and then what kind of a strategy do I implement? I mean, do I, am I going after first time home buyers? Am I going after realtors? Am I building my database? And that's a database management that I'll work on. Then it's your plan. Okay, so if I'm going after realtors, I'm going to meet with them like once a week. That's, that's your plan. And then your tactics is your tools. What kind of mm. tools are you going to employ to, to get there? For example, when Val is here, for me, database management has been huge from day one. Like yeah. the first seven clients that I closed in the first 12 months, imagine I was doing half a loan a month when I started. Wow. And, and, and so those first seven clients are probably worth two, $300,000 to me in terms of commission income that I have earned. It's because what they referred and who referred and then they referred someone from my very first client, even though I was brand new in the industry, I knew that it's a still at the end of the day, a referral based business. And if you want, you can stop marketing yourself in five years if you do a really, really good job of it, irrespective of where you are in, in your career curve. And so art of home ownership, for example, plays a huge role in that, right? For me, that database management is such a, such a big thing that um, I went, um, I mean, my goal was that how do we get 500 loans just out of database over the next 12 months? It wow. was it was a very simple, clear cut, as you call smart goal, so to say. And I was looking at tools. I was like, what are the kind of tools that can help me? I was already really good at it. So I'm, I wasn't even starting at say ground zero, so to say. And so I wasn't looking at just some basic tools. I was looking at something that can actually take take my database management game, my referral game to a completely different level. Uh, and that's where the, I mean, the art of home ownership came in. They are, they, it's not just about sending emails every two weeks or maybe send send a closing gift. And we do all of that stuff, by the way, and we were already doing it. But but it's taking all of that stuff to a level that at least I personally don't know of any other tool that can help you in terms of staying in touch, providing value, and then hopefully, I mean, you will gain referrals from the database. Well, this is such a brilliant point, Shashank, because as you talk about that, you know what you're really, really good at. I mean, you you know loans inside and out, you know how to help the consumer, but you know that there are certain things where you lack and that's where having the tools, I love that you compare tools and tactics go hand in hand. Having a tool like the art of homeownership that helps you again with that database management, that's what that's the critical piece. And that's how you think. That's again, you know where you, you shine. You know what you're gonna continue to do day in and day out. And then you fill in with the pieces, you fill in with the tools that ultimately help you become, again, the top 1%. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's the tile, style of mindset that almost every single top originator that has. And again, you hear hearing that from you directly is just, it's like, ladies and gentlemen, this is not rocket science. Like, and that's, that's a hard, that's a part that like you mentioned, Shashank, I, I love Shashank and, and this is no offense to him. He, He's not always the smartest guy in the room. Shashank probably is, but he just knows what he's really, really good at. He just knows like, I'm yeah. going to do this. This is what me and my team are going to do. And then we'll let everything build on. And Val, that's the art of homeownership. That's exactly what it's designed for. That's what it's built for. It's to be that piece, that database management that can help even originators like Shashank where they have a business that continues to grow. He was already successful. Then he's like, hey, you know what? To, to even grow, to even be more and more successful, I'm going to add in a tool like this. Yeah, that's what I love about Shashank being on the platform is he was already doing those numbers and production levels that every originator wants to get to. But he said, how can I even up level my business more and create more value? Not only the level of production, but how much value I'm bringing to my clients. Yeah. So I think that's honestly half the battle is having that mindset of wanting to help your clients. Um, that's really what Art of Home Ownership does is it makes you the lifelong advisor that Every loan officer should aim to become, but I think it's very easy to get in that mindset of, I want to get more production, more production. I want to close more loans. It's very easy to shoot for the numbers, but it, I think it even sets you apart more than being on the, you know, the top originator Scotsman guide to actually bring that value to your clients. So I love it. I think that's so important. So I kind of went right along with that, Shashank. I got a question for you and you kind of mentioned this and I, I would love your 
maybe dive a little bit deeper into this. What is your ratio when it comes to trying to go after new business to actually like staying with your current clients? Again, database management. How yeah. how how much time and dedication are you trying to go out and, and drum up new leads, drum up new opportunity as to like what you already have in the pie or what you already have and those loans you've already closed? Uh, very little. And I'll I'll tell you, Josh, is that when I got in the business, I told you I closed seven loans in the first 12 months. And I got signals uh, from everywhere, like you need to do this and you need to do that and you're watching this and you're watching that, right? And then I had to I had to simplify it. As you said, I mean, it's it's a complicated business. There are so many things that, that, that goes around, right? But if you break it down to a very simple, basic level, as a loan originator, even as a CEO of the mortgage company, like, like the way I am, uh, you are only trying to solve three problems in the industry for yourself as an originator. You are trying to solve, how do I get leads? How do I get those leads to close with me? And then how do I get those closed loans to keep referring me business? That's it. Those are the only three problems you're trying to solve. And then you get into the details of what tools can you use at all three stages, right? What happens with database management is that it solves both the first and the third problem at the same time. You do not have to be keep going out to get the leads all the time because you did such an incredible job of the third part, which is to stay in touch with them, keep providing value. Because if you do the if you do the third part right, the first part comes back automatically. And that's when, when you ask me, how much time do I spend in trying to get new business? I just have no time to mm. invest into getting, I, I don't go to meeting realtors and builders and all those people in terms of asking them to, to give me business is because that's, I mean, I, I've just run out of time to do that because I, I run, I mean, I did $360 million last year Plus, I run a company that grows 100% year on year. I mean, and so we are in 12 states now, 25 state licenses. And so, and we went from, we were five people, Josh, this time in 2019. And wow. it was just me, two processors and an admin assistant. And, and I was doing 200 million just with that team. And then we started, we decided to grow because I was at a point where I was thinking that whatever I have learned in this business, I want to spread it to more people. I want to train, mentor, coach more loan officers. And so we have gone from being five people this time, two years back to over 100 people right now. So if that's the growth, then that's the tools like the art of home ownership or, or the mindset of having database in front of you helps you is that you may never out, head out of your office to prospect and get new business. And you could, as I said, my, my goal with the art of home ownership, for example, is to get an additional, not, a, not just get 500, additional 500 loans out of my database over the next 12 months. So if I get to do that, I don't have to ever step out and I can focus on growing growing my company. Um, wow. But those are the three problems really. Again, whichever stage of the loan officer you're in, you could be already top 20 in the industry or you could be languishing after being in the industry for 20 years. Just focus on those three verticals and then you pick your tools. I mean, I'm just talking about the tools that I use. You yeah. don't have to absolutely use it, pick your own. But those are all, those are really just the three problems. Don't get distracted by any other problem. But clearly, I mean, the tools are working for you. And I have to, I'm retracting what I said. Shashank is clearly the smartest guy in every room. Like if you didn't hear those, like those three points, like, like <laughs> I go back to when I was a producing loan officer and to when I like was running my mortgage company and it's it, those three things. And like I said, it's that simple, Shashank. Sometimes as an industry, sometimes as you know, producing LOs or even people who are running companies, we overcomplicate the process. Yeah. But yep. what you, and what you did is you solved a, the first and the third problem with one tool, like one solution. <laughs> Like, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, this is why having incredible people like Shashank willing to share. That's what I love about him, too. He is so humble. He's willing enough to say, hey, I'm going to take time out of my busy day. He's got, you know, one of the top producing uh, companies in all of lending, and he's he's willing to share it with you. And then we have Val, who's willing to share Art of Homeownership, the tools that are that are helping him get there. It's just an exciting time. And as Shashank and Val, what... I want to shift to now is kind of that is it is an exciting time. 2020 was a banner year. Shishang, you mentioned that yes. basically a lot of people had a great year, but most of yep. us could just fall into business rates were low, but the industry is changing. It's evolving. Our, there's definitely some things coming on the horizon. We all need to be aware of, but there's also some tools and some other, again, some processes mm -hmm. and efficiencies that are coming out, which leads me kind of right into, hey, Shashank, let's talk about Rachel. Like, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't, if you haven't heard about Rachel, <laughs> bow, 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 you're about, you're about, but let, let's talk about the future of our industry and some of the things that you're seeing. So Shashank, let's, let's, uh, let's kind of start there. 
Yeah, we'll we'll get to Rachel. Um, I want we'll, to. I mean, we're gonna good tease, with you. We're tease, gonna tease you, you tease on that. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little later in the show. But uh, I'm I'm always about, as I said, I'm always about mindset and strategy first before we get into the the plan and the tactics. And we need to see where the industry is heading. Right. One of the biggest consumer shift in all the industries, literally, has been what I call moving from information asymmetry to more information parity. Now. For thousands of years of human evolution, the seller always knew more about what they were selling. Or uh, a salesperson knew more about what they were selling. And, and that has happened through the entire, entire history is because there was no information that the buyer had to know or verify what the seller is saying is correct, right? So if you were a loan originator in the 80s and the 90s and someone came to you and you said, the rate is 5%. Now I, as a borrower, had no other data point to verify if that 5% is correct or wrong, right? I could not just get on bankrate.com and figure out what the rate is. If you told me that you had the best service out of 500,000 originators in the country, you would still, I, I, again, as a borrower, had no way of knowing what you're saying is correct. That was information asymmetry. So what the seller said or what the salesperson said or what the service provider said the user, the consumer, the borrower had to believe because they, they had no, no way of verifying what, what the other person was saying was correct. What has happened in the last 10 years because of the knowledge industry, because of the fact that you have so much information on the web now is that, and, and what Google calls zero moment of truth, ZMOT, is when I come to you, when someone comes to me as, as a borrower, and I tell them, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Borrow, the rate is 5% today. And they can say, are you kidding me? I see rates at 3% on backrate.com. Or I can tell them, look, I have the most amazing service there is out of all the loan officers in California. And they'll be like, are you kidding me? I'm looking at your Yelp review right now. You are at 3.6 star. So this entire thing where we could tell the borrower whatever we wanted, and they, would, they had to believe it. Look at it from the real estate agent side as well, right? It was practically 10, 15 years back before Zillow came in that I was the only one who knew which homes were, were for sale. You as a consumer had no idea which homes were for sale. So I was the one who controlled the information. So before the Zillows and the red fence of the world happened, right? Now I can find, in fact, in most cases, I can find the listing faster than my real estate agent can because I might have an alert set up which he or she might not have. So. We have moved from a world of information asymmetry where the sellers and the, and the service providers used to have, have this upper hand to almost information parity. And what that does to the industry is that if you are an average loan officer who all it does is quotes rates, you have practically zero chance of surviving in the next three to five years. You need to bring more value to the table, something that even if they can find on internet, they can they are not able to, so they can find the, the information on the internet, but they can decipher the knowledge out of it. They can pack it in a way which works for them. So you need to become an even more of a consultant, even more of an advisor, even more of a person who, who breaks down the problems and solves it for them. So that's why it's, it's, so it's already becoming a trend and it's going to only accelerate down the, down the road. So if you don't have tools like the art of home ownership, which continuously adds value, you can't just add value for the 30 days of the escrow. That's not where the industry is right now. You need to provide value before the transaction and you need to provide value after the transaction. We actually as an industry do an amazing job of those 30 days, Josh. If you look at the stats, almost 81% of people are actually satisfied with their loan officer. But how many of them do actually come back? What, 34%, I think is the number? I don't have the exact number, but about one third of people come back to the same loan officer. Almost half of them forget the name just after six months of the transaction. So we information asymmetry. Update, yeah. Real quick on that. We just got information yesterday on our show that it's now it's now 18% come back. That's it. Oh, wow. like, okay. 18%. Oh, wow. Like, and I'm just like, wow, like that's insane to me. So that's like you're you're literally speaking to the like the points that everybody should be listening to. But yeah, it's it's amazing. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but that, no, that was about our no. show yesterday. Yeah. Um uh, and you're right. I've I've been reading that the servicers have only been able to retain 18 18% of their database last year. So these are major disruptions. For so this is a consumer shift. This is not just happening within our industry. This is a this is a shift that's happening within, within across across the uh, the industries. And the second biggest shift that 
that I'm seeing is that the consumers are getting more and more used to predictable experiences. Now, we talk about Arcus Lending trying to become the Amazon Prime of mortgages, and there is a reason for that. Ooh. It's because when you order something from Amazon Prime, right? 48 hours later, it's on your doorstep 99.9% .9 of the time. I'm not saying they get it right 100%. I mean, everyone gets it wrong. But then you have the millennial generation, which was raised on practically online. They had some offline. So they still can relate themselves, say, if you give them a phone call or whatever, right? But the Gen, Gen Z has been raised practically entirely on the web and on the apps. If they order from DoorDash, I mean, three minutes before they know they can get their plates and dishes out because they know that the driver will pull into the driveway. They are they don't have to stand on the on the sideline on a freezing winter thinking, when would the cab come? Would it be three minutes or three hours before I can hail a cab? They know exactly it will be here in seven and a half minutes because they can order from Uber. That's the predictability of the experience. That has been a huge change with the technology in the last 10 years is that you can guarantee when the person will receive the service or the product. That's where the industry needs to go. Because if you are trying to address the customers that are used to it, and suddenly they get into mortgages and you're like, ah, maybe, maybe not, we'll close in 40 days, let's see how it goes. That's not the kind of companies they want to work with. There is a reason why Caliber did 80, $82 billion last year, Josh, in, in production. They sold for $1.6 billion, right? Yep. Better did $22 billion last year. They are valued $6 billion. Oh, so a company that did fourth, one fourth of the pro production is valued four times higher than Caliber. I have nothing against Caliber. It's an amazing company. But understand what, how market is looking at who will rule the future of the mortgage industry. Wow. People who are advanced in tech, people who are going there, and, and that's the shift because people can see that that's where the shift is. That if you're not, and, and that's why we are so passionate about consumer experience and building the Amazon Prime of mortgages is because given all the uncertainty even within the industry, I think it's, it can still be done. And, and, that's, and those are the two trends that shows you is that you as a loan originator, if you want to, I mean, stay apart from competition. If you don't want to be the one that gets completely routed in three to five years from now, you have to be better than than the average loan originator. Uh, you have to provide the value, whether it's uh, it's through tools like the art of home ownership or just educating yourself more. And in terms of the the kind of education that you can provide, that's something. I mean, as you know, I mean, I started blogging in two thousand nine when less than two ten people in the industry were doing. But that's from my continuous, relentless focus on providing education to customers. Man, there was so much you dropped in there, right there. So you're like, oh, my head is like spinning. Like it literally is like, oh my gosh. Like again, this is, I, and I truly believe, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Matt was right here on the show today that if anybody can do it, Shashank is going to achieve the Amazon Prime of this industry. Like just because it's his mindset, it's his, he continues to push. 2019, he had five employees. Now he's over 100 employees two years later. That is his focus. That is his drive. But like we mentioned, it's having the tools. It's having the processes in place. And again, Val, that is it. It's art of homeownership. All that Shashank is talking about, it's having the tool in place so you can continue to be efficient. And having that database management that art of homeownership provides, that is something that is just, again, it's almost untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. And I think especially talking about how the market is shifting, something that's so common that we always say is, how everyone is differentiating themselves is saying that they have the best service, the fastest speed, the lowest rates. So really that's not differentiating if that's what everyone is saying. Yeah. So I think it's important that originators genuinely look at how am I different than the competition? And that's what we really want to stress and accomplish with the art of home ownership is setting you apart from the competition. Cause it's not necessarily about, comparing yourself to others, but you want to make sure that you're setting yourself apart and that you're different so that you can go to someone and say, I have this tangible thing that I'm going to offer you and I can guarantee that it's going to add value and save you money in the long run. That's going to set you apart big time. So it's something that consumers really can't, they're not going to say no to. They're not going to say, no, I don't want you to help me long term and make sure that I save money. So it's really, it's a no brainer. And especially as, you know, rates climb and there's not a surplus of business in the industry, that's gonna be even more important moving forward.
Well, and Shishan, you mentioned it. The three to five years, if originators aren't thinking about these things now and putting them in place, we love all of you. We want to see everybody succeed, yeah, but, but, the, but, but, but evolution is happening. And if you don't keep up with these things, if you don't, don't start putting these practices into place now, you will be phased out. Like, like, let's just be freaking honest here. Like, let's just call it as it is. Your example of better.com, like the technology is driving our industry and you have to be an, an adopter of it and actually be able to put it efficiently into place so you can utilize it, which I know we're starting to run out of time. We've got a lot. Val has got like, I can already tell. She's got a big event coming up here in about 30 minutes, which we're going to announce here in just a sec. But before we get to that, Shashank, I want to, for a few minutes, I want to talk about this because you have created something that has never been done before. So I want to take a couple minutes and just talk because again, this is, that this is that mindset. This is who you are and driving and furthering our industry. Let's talk a little bit about Rachel. Sure. So conversational AI, Val and, and Josh, uh, have been playing a huge role and again, shifting the consumer preference in terms of how they interact with, with technology. And Siri came up with first, Alexa came, came up uh, later. Actually, I forget which one came first, but they, they kind of came together. Uh, Google Assistant came, came a little later. Those are all conversational AIs. People, you can, not people, but the tech, I get confused with when people tech already. It's only <laughs> 2021. Imagine what will happen in 2040. Oh, geez. Uh, but, so we are now we are now talking to Siri and Alexa more in terms of, hey, Siri, I mean, tell me who was the 16th president of the United States. And she will say, hey, here's what I found on web. My five-year-old, Josh and Val, talks only to Alexa about her Amazon Prime orders. First of all, she would refuse to order from any other store. Two, she will always be checking Alexa, where is my stuff? And when, where, when, it's, when it's coming and all of that. So that's the, that's again, and I'm not just, just talking six year olds. I mean, you and I and all of us talk to Siri all the time about trying to get, I mean, call this person. And we have taken that approach and actually made a major upgrade into creating what is called a digital human. It is a part of conversational AI platform, but instead of just being in the audio format which Siri and Alexa is, it's actually in a visual format. So it's actually a human. Uh, it's of, of course a digital human. Uh, we call it Rachel. And she is capable of doing all that Siri and Alexa does, but Rachel is has been designed for the mortgage industry. Hmm. So a lot of frequently asked questions like, I mean, we have already trained her on the top 100 most frequently asked questions for mortgages. So you can ask her questions about how do I get pre-approved? What documents do you need? Is 30 year fixed better or five year arm better? All those conversational question or the initial questions that people have, uh, Rachel will be able to answer that for you. We have also made an API integration from Rachel to our loan origination system where you can, instead of calling your processor a loan officer, you can actually talk to Rachel and say, hey, where is my loan? What's my status? What's my interest rate? And Rachel will be able to, through the, the API integration with our loan origination system, she'll be able to tell you. It's a still a work in progress because, I mean, it's a very new, I mean, it's the first in the industry. So it is as brand new a technology as it is, but we are trying to make upgrades where uh, at some point of time in the future, in the next six to science, nine months, she will be able to, or it will be able to, I don't know if I can, I can <laughs> she for her, but it will be able to answer pretty much all customer service questions, uh, the initial questions that the borrowers and users of the websites have. Uh, so from that perspective, again, we are always looking at where the trends are in terms of, in this case, we are looking at how people are talking, how the conversation is going, where it's heading. Uh, and I think Rachel will play a huge role in terms of changing the dynamics of taking a lot of load from loan officers and processors where they can focus on more important stuff and uh, let Rachel handle some of these initial questions. Wow. I'm just going to say it. Rachel is sounding sexy, whether it's a she, <laughs> he, it, what a man that is, like that's just, but, but this is the conversations. This is where our industry is going. And like, and that's why it's exciting to talk about. And I know Shisho, we're just starting to talk, like touch the tip of the spear. I, I yes. can't wait to hear more about it, but Val, that's just it too, is like, there are tools like the art of, art of homeownership, Rachel, like Shashank is talking about that are helping the modern day originator. And that's what this entire conversation kind of bringing it all full circle is the modern not only in the modern day, but who originators are becoming, who what they need to be doing to continue to be at the top of their game. Like you mentioned, Val, leveling up their game, you need to have these processes and tools in place. And again, that's what the Art of Homeownership provides. Everybody listening right now, you can get these things in place, which kind of leads us into where I want to end this is Val, you guys are actually, the Art of Homeownership is hosting a show right after this here in about 30 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, with Barry Habib and Dan Rawwich are going to be doing a live talking about how to thrive in an ever-changing market. I'm going to go ahead and let you talk about that for just a second because it's going to be right here on your Facebook page. 
Yes, we are so excited for this. It's actually the first time that Dan and Barry have been on an event together. So it's going to be super huh? cool. Um, uh, Ryan Grant is going to be hosting and kind of leading the conversation and just giving some insight into what's going to happen in the market, where to look for information to be able to communicate to your clients effectively and let them know what's going on in the market and then make sure that your business is ready for whatever happens in the industry because we know how uh, volatile this market can be. So we're super awesome. excited. That is going to be at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So like you said, 30 minutes. Um, make sure to head on over to that. It's going to be awesome. Wow. And last but certainly not least, if this isn't enough, not only have you got so much brilliant information from Shushang, not only can you go see Barry and Dan here in like 30 minutes, but also you guys are giving away basically an opportunity. You're giving away a list or a, a, a val. Tell them what they get. ShredAOH.com. If they go to ShredAOH and they register with their email, you guys are actually giving them a gift. Yes, we have. So what we do at the Art of Homeownership, we also coach on the things that are included in the platform. So one of those things is our post-close call. We really stress this a lot. It sets you apart from the competition. You really just set expectations after the loan is closed. So we are actually giving away the script that we give to all of our partners. So all you have to do is drop your first name, last name, email, and you will get that information followed up with you. Boom, right there. And it's a game changer. And, and Shushank, I know you're one of those that you have a script. Like you you mentioned, you have a script, a process. You're one of those guys who just absolutely nail it. So going to shredaoh.com and registering for this, ladies and gentlemen, can help you start to, again, you're going to have to nip at Shushank Seals because he's already so far ahead of you. But if you want to get there, these are the little things you have to be doing to, to again, to be the top 1%. So Val and Shushank, I cannot thank both of you enough for joining me. And again, we, we're just starting to, these conversations are what really get me pumped up. This is what gets me excited for our industry and i really appreciate you guys, you guys joining me for this call today thank you thanks guys it's been fun thanks way more us. to come go right now over the art of homeownership page you do not want to miss barry and dan and then again you guys are gonna have to stay tuned i guarantee i'm gonna have shashank back on the show talking about some of the things he's up to because he's always up to fun and you can always <laughs> check out the art of homeownership.com for more information or reach out to val directly if you guys have any questions a couple of great comments coming in guys appreciate you joining for the show and as always we appreciate you we love you now it's time for all of you to go shred go show up hustle repeat every day See ya!